Hello, everyone. Let's continue where we left off. So, now that we did one of those examples, let's do some more practice problems. So, like the structure, let's draw the structure for the ammonium ion. So, we shall know the ammonium ion is NH4. All right. So for right now, we're, we're not going to be concerned where the ammonium ion is uh, or, you know, where the charge is. But let's first draw the Lewis structure. So we have N, then position the H is all around the nitrogen. Okay, like so. Now let's calculate um, our advanced electrons. So nitrogen... It's in group five, so five electrons in the valence shell. Then hydrogen has one valence electron, but there's four of them, like so. So we're going to say, okay, four electrons. Okay, but uh, when we have a formal charge, we also have to consider the number of electrons in the formal charge. So we have a positive charge here. When we have a positive charge, we're going to take one away from the total electron count. So we're going to say negative one electrons, okay? And that's because the electrons are um, um, lost. So when there's a positive charge, you lose electrons. And then when there's a negative charge, you add electrons. So if we add these numbers up, we get eight valence electrons total. So that's our total. So when we do that, um, we have to distribute eight electrons as bonds. So two electrons each, two, four, six, eight. And you see there, we have accounted for all eight electrons. So that's our structure. But we got to remember that we had to put this in brackets because it's an ion. And then we get, we put a plus charge to indicate that ammonium is positively charged. Okay, there we go. So that's the structure of ammonium ion. All right, now let's try hydroxide ion. What's the structure for hydroxide? Well, we know hydroxide is OH minus. So oxygen has six valence electrons because it's in group 6A. Hydrogen has one valence electron because it's in group one, uh, 1A. And then since we have a negative charge here, we're going to add an additional electron. So this is a total of eight electrons, actually. So in this case, there's no central atom really because ox there's only two elements. So it'll be oxygen in the center, or you know, at one point, and hydrogen. So now we're gonna take two electrons to form a bond. That'll be our single bond to hydrogen, hydrogen and oxygen. We can only do a single bond because hydrogen can only have two electrons. And then we have six electrons left over. We're going to put them on oxygen. And that will give us a total of eight electrons for this ion. So hydroxide exists as a negative charge. So we put it in brackets. There we go. Okay. Now for the last example, let's do carbon tetrachloride. So carbon tetrachloride. So carbon tetrachloride, the formula is CCl4. So that stands for carbon and chlorine, not carbon, carbon, and four iodine molecules. Okay, so carbon has four electrons here. Chlorine, remember, has seven electrons because this is in group 7A, but we have four of them, so that's going to be 28 electrons. Okay, then if we sum up the total here, we get 28 plus 4, 
which equals 32 electrons. So there's no charge, so we don't have to put any accounting into the negative or positive charges. So it's going to be 32 electrons. So expect to be able to draw any um, polyatomic ion or um, neutral compound. All right. So in this case, carbon is the central atom because there's only one carbon atom. And then we're going to put chlorine around carbon um, equally spaced. So like we did before, we put a bond between the carbon and chlorine atoms. So we get eight electrons um, accounted for in bonds. So now we have 24 electrons remaining. Okay, so the one thing we could do is distribute these electrons as non-bonding pairs of electrons around chlorine, so chlorine has an octet. So chlorine here doesn't have an octet yet, so let's put electrons around them. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay, so if we look around the carbon, carbon has eight electrons around it, four bonds times two electrons each, eight electrons. So carbon, eight electrons, each chlorine atom. If we count each chlorine atom, we see that there's two, four, six electrons as lone pairs. And then remember a bond that counts as two shared electrons, so that's eight. So each chlorine atom has eight, so we're, we're, every atom is happy. And if we count all the electrons around carbon, um, there's eight. Then we count the number of lone pairs per uh, chlorine atom and times that by four, that'll be six times four chlorine atoms. So six, uh, six electrons as lone pairs around on chlorine times four is 24 plus eight is 32 total electrons. So this is the structure of core, uh, um, not core form, but carbon tetrachloride or uh, tetrachloromethane. So um, a substance that was really popular back in the day when chemistry, there wasn't much concern about the environment, but nowadays this compound is regulated so it's, it's really hard to get your hands on some of this. And that's because it reacts with the atmosphere. Okay. So that's how we draw Lewis structures. Um, kind of introduction here. Um, so now let's move on here to the next subject. Okay. So now let's talk about molecules that don't uh, seem to satisfy the octet rule. So let's, let's do that here. Okay, so what, you know, we, we kind of been just drawing single bonds. So what happens if that doesn't seem to work for some molecules? And that does happen. Okay, so let's talk about formaldehyde. So formaldehyde, a very important industrial chemical, a very important chemical for preserving things in biology. Um, when I took biology, they always said, oh, we're going to be working formaldehyde, dealing with, you know, uh, you know, dealing with body parts, so we're going to be using formaldehyde to preserve some things. So um, it's important that you don't get it in your eyes or don't wear contacts because they may trap trap under your eyes. So um, formaldehyde, a important chemical. Um, we seldom don't use formaldehyde. Uh, well, you we do, but um, it's usually as a solution and not not usually in its pure form, which is a gas. Okay. So let's write the compound now. So we're kind of uh, we're going to now kind of talk about a little bit of ochem here, where many molecules in the natural world are organic, meaning they only contain hydrogen and carbon and oxygen, for example. But usually they don't contain any metal atoms or other um, non-organic or inorganic elements. All right. So C H two 
So I've drawn it this way so we can see the central atom. The central atom is not hydrogen, it's carbon. So the total number of valence electrons is for carbon, four, plus hydrogen, we have two of them, so two times one, that's for hydrogen. And then for oxygen, we have six, remember? So six valence electrons. So it would help students if they kind of remember that the group number for each uh, where the element appears on the periodic table, that's how many valence electrons we will count, okay? And you can make note of this on the periodic table. Um, the periodic table is listed in group by group number, so it's easy to kind of pay, uh, um, pair to those two things together. All right, if we add the total now, we get 12 electrons. Now let's try um, drawing our structure here. So we draw the carbon in the center, okay? Um, you know, it doesn't matter where we put the hydrogen and the oxygen, just make sure they're around each element, so around the carbon. So let's just put the H here, maybe put another H here, and then put the oxygen on the top here. Okay, so the hydrogens, they have enough electrons, they can only hold two, because they only have an S orbital. Now we need to make sure, so that's six electrons, right? Two, four, six, divided by two, number of electrons, um, that, uh, or sorry, the number of bonds we get, and that's times two per, two bonds per, uh, so two electrons per bond. So that's six electrons already accounted for. Now we need to add six more. So the one thing we can do is, which, which, which atom should we balance? Should we balance carbon or should we balance oxygen? Well, it turns out um, it doesn't matter. So, so let's just balance oxygen first. So let's add six, right? That will mean carbon doesn't have an octet. So carbon would be deficient. So I'm just going to write a chart. Well, I'm going to write a charge here. But I'll explain how I get it um, later in the chapter, okay? So just stick with me here. So when carbon doesn't have eight electrons, it only has uh, three electrons. And remember, carbon in its neutral habit, in, uh, in the neutral element, carbon has four valence electrons. But if we count the number of bonds around carbon, it only really now has three electrons because the other three are shared with the element other elements, hydrogen and oxygen. So if we compare that number three to what carbon usually has and subtract it from it, we get four minus three. And when that happens, um, we get a net total of plus one, and that's the charge we associate with carbon now because it now has less valence electrons than it had when it was just carbon by itself. So it's a positive charge here. Now oxygen, if we count the number of electrons oxygen has, now it has two, four, six, six valence electrons as um, lone pairs. And then it has one valence electron that's involved in the chemical bond. So it technically now has six plus one or seven valence electrons. So if we subtract that number from six, it's number of valence electrons when oxygen is not in a compound, we get six minus seven and we get negative one. So now oxygen has a negative one charge. Or we could just, um, we could just leave it as that. Okay. So there's something wrong with this picture. It does, it seems like carbon doesn't have enough electrons to attain the octet. So now we can do a little trick here where we take one of the electrons, one of the pair of electrons, and use it to form another bond to oxygen. Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna take this bond here and form a bond. So uh, whenever we form a bond, so now we're going to draw a different structure here. Okay, so when we move, um, when we move, non-bonding electrons to form a bond. Okay, so some things happen, okay? Um, 
negative charges, they will um, increase charge by one. Okay, so for example, this will go from negative one to zero. So it's getting more positive, right? So we're going to zero. So for positive charges, when we're forming a, a bond between an atom that has a positive charge before, it's going to, um, positive charges, in this case, they will um, maybe I should just use the exclamation mark or a colon. Maybe that makes more sense. Sorry. In this case, for positive charges, you're going to decrease charge by one. And that's because um, in, the first, in the case for negative charges, um, you know, um, there's going to be less electrons around the around the around the around um, around the atom that you're moving electrons from and in this case for positive charges there's going to be more electrons around the atom okay so they're kind of vice versa so if you have a negative charge and you move electrons to form a bond uh, from that element um, there's going to be less electrons around it um, because more are going to be shared. So that's why the charge decreases. And when you have a positive charge, you're going to have more electrons around that element now. So the charge inc uh, the charge tends to decrease or get lower because more electrons around the atom, okay? All right, so that's kind of how the charges change here. So now we're going to draw a structure where we have the same skeleton, but now we have an additional second bond to carbon and oxygen. And since we move the lone pair, that charge, those charges disappear and we get a neutral structure. And this is the structure for formaldehyde. Because now we have all atoms, they have a uh, filled valence shell, hydrogen with two electrons and carbon and oxygen with an octet each. So if we count the number of bonds around carbon, it's four. Oxygen has two bonds, that's four electrons and two lone pairs which account for two more, uh, four more electrons around oxygen, and that's an octet around oxygen, and that's our final structure, okay? So these charges I drew, they are called formal charges, and they're a way to uh, keep track of electrons, if they're in bonds or not. And that tells, that tells us, relatively speaking, um, where electron density is in the atom, but it doesn't tell us um, anything really about like polarity or anything um but we'll talk more about that later so these charges they're, they're meant to illustrate where where there's a deficiency in electrons based on elements and compounds versus elements when they're not in compounds for example carbon and formaldehyde and just pure carbon in like uh nature so that's that's where this formal charge Kind of comes into play. So formal charge can be confusing because less, um, it's very similar to oxidation numbers, but they're not the same thing. So when we talk about formal charges, I'll I'll go into it more in more detail. Um, so I'll 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 refrain from talking about it right now. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, that took a while there, um, but. It's important. We'll have more practice with this in discussion, not this, uh, not this upcoming week, but the following week. Um, so now let's um, now let's draw the Lewis structure. Actually, um, let's pause there. Um, we'll pick up where we left off here in the next video. Okay, so the, um, that'll be the last video for this lecture. So let's pick up um, where uh, let's pick up um, here in the next video. So I'll see everyone then.